Hello, everyone. Oh, welcome to our last uh, session in track two, and which will be led by Birgit Pauli Hack. Birgit is a publisher of Gutenberg Times, a site with news around WordPress blog editor and beyond. She hosts regular Gutenberg Live questions and answers, YouTube, and the podcast Gutenberg Change Log. Uh, Birgit has, contrib has been contributing to the WordPress open source project since 2014 and contributes now full-time, sponsored by Automatic. After 25 years living in Florida and 20 years running a web agency, she and her husband of 31 years moved back to Munich to be closer to their families. So what Birgit will be talking about is how to customize the blog editor for client projects. Not every project needs custom development blocks to provide a great blog editor experience for your clients and their use cases. You also don't need to be a JavaScript whiz to make adjustments to the WordPress core experience. It certainly helps you to grow gradually into it. In this talk, we will discuss tools and methods for developers to curate the editor experience. Attendees learn about the nature of blog JSON and theme JSON when to use the block styles and block variations. We will also cover server and client-side filters uh, with examples and resources to learn more. After Birgit finishes her session, we will have questions and answers. And to start with Birgit, here's the floor. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Maya. Um, I think we have in the description a little bit too much for half an hour. So um, we're probably not getting to all of it, but what you're going to be walking away with is a list of resources um, that help you go down the rabbit hole about the things that you're interested in. Yes, uh, well, I think I need to change my um, bio because all these numbers, they add up to, well, this woman is old. <laughs> It's not the experience anymore, so yeah. Um, but I'm really happy to connect with the German community, and I'm, I don't want to apologize for speaking English. It's just kind of it's easier for me with the technical topic. But um, if you have questions later on, yeah, you definitely can ask them in German, and I will, if I can, ask uh, Einstein in German. Um, so the slides are on the Bitly. That's the I don't have a QR code. Uh, I only have a bit.ly link. <laughs> oh, it's very uh, succinct. So it's bit.ly and then WCDE23, um, and you can follow along if you want to. So when I started um, working in, uh, with the, uh, in the agency, starting to implement the uh, block editor for client projects, I had all the various reactions that you probably encountered too, but I found that the more I talked positive about it, the more the client also wanted to explore it. And of course, I also had um, people who wanted, nah, don't change anything, we have our workflows fine, uh, and uh, yeah, please don't change anything. And, but I had uh, two project managers who said, you know what? Switch it on, and we'll see what happens. And our editors will be fine. Yeah, just make our colors, the 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 design colors from our brand, um, make them available through the color editor, and then we should be fine. Um, and then some people, so I realized that actually only small changes would be. Uh, people would be able to use the block editor even with the classic themes or the, the current theme because we were told, and most of it was true, that the block editor works out of the box. Of course, when you are very opinionated about the design, you bump up against the opinionation, uh, uh, bump up against the opin opinions of the developers and the designers of the block editor, but that's a different story, and we're still doing that. But um, you don't need a whole JavaScript expertise um, or no React to do um, small changes, bigger changes, and only on level four, yeah, you are coming into the programming part. And even level four is for someone who does PHP um, and comes from, from that world, 
can modify the, uh, the, the block editor only on level 5 when you want to use React to customize or create custom blocks. Um, you need um, quite some JavaScript and dive into the new world of um, Gutenberg or the block editor. Um, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to talk. Um, I talk about all the levels, but I will dive a little bit deeper into the less code variations, like the style and controls, um, how to block uh, block patterns, and then adding block styles. And then for the other ones, I'll give you resources where we can talk about it um, in a Q and A. Um, so that we can. So level one was that use case. Um, I want the brand colors in the color editor. And then the question is, do you still want the custom colors? So users can create colors or create color combinations, or uh, is that too far <laughs> into the design of your, uh, your editors? And um, so that looks like this. So here is a, that's a modified text color um, palette. Um, with the with the yeah the brand colors and then there's a custom color view and if you don't want them you use the uh, theme JSON and that dates how old the slide is actually um, and you just uh, use the settings color and then custom false that would switch off that custom color thing um, and you could do that with all that uh, but the first thing that I did when we switched over was test the theme. And um, do all the blocks show up nicely, or do we have to do smaller styling uh, changes? And I used a, a gist um, and uh, have also uh, make that available to everybody. Um, we have um, a, a number of blocks in, in code view, and then you can add it to a post and then see how the theme reacts. Yeah? And um, so I, I did this with underscore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do we get this? Yeah. So this is the gist um, in block form, and that is a cover block, an image block, a gallery block. Yeah, it, it all displays fine. Wow. Yeah. And then the quote, full glow, verse, buttons, in uh, all kind of variations. Um, so I use that to just test the theme. Um, maybe a client theme uh, that they're already using on the on the production site or on the on a test site, or I used uh, one of the other themes. And so this um, theme worked very well. Oops, you could make it still better. And then uh, there was another a client project, and that was a theme from 27, uh, 2007, and that didn't work that well. So. There was, um, yeah, going back, yeah, see here the text kind of blends in. There's some styling to be done, um, but it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was just a few things uh, that needed to be adjusted to make it also work on a very old theme. Yeah, that's now, yeah, here the, the big things, pink fonts didn't work well, the sideline, uh, line height. But um, so, if you ever have that situation that you have a, a client who wants to try out the block editor and you don't know how that works or if the theme, feel free to use that uh, gist on um, on GitHub. I link this here, and you get um, yeah the whole raw thing. And if you the the Pictures are public, so if you put them in your post, you will see the pictures. If you want to replace them, yeah, feel free, of course. Uh, but uh, where's my I'm lost on my. Who gets lost on their computer? I do. I do. Yeah. Yay. But that's a different level. Sorry. So if you have a block theme that a, a client wants to use, it's very, uh, that whole process of testing blocks is now built into the site editor um, with version 6.3. Yeah, you don't have to, um, you, you go to site editor and then to style and then you get, um, this is a whole set of 
blocks where you have the test blocks, the text block media, design widgets, theme block, um, and even the custom blocks that come with your plugins. You can see how they work. And you can also change them in the site editor, the uh, general or... Uh, I just wanted to point that out, that um, that's the next generation of testing a theme and the blocks in a theme. Um, the next one, um, so custom color palette, we, we talked about it. Um, you have two steps if you are not using a block theme uh, or if you're not using theme JSON. You have one, you need to put the, uh, uh, the custom color scheme into your functions PHP and then of course that's on the left hand side uh, where you just um, name them, give them a name, give them a slug and a color to it. And then on the right hand side, uh, is the um, style CSS representation of those blocks. So you, it, it's, it's a lot of duplication kind of thing. Um, and if you use um, the theme JSON, you just do it in one file in the theme JSON under settings color palette, and then it uh, automatically creates the CSS for it. Um, so um, that is relatively easy now um, when the classic and classic themes can use the theme JSON uh, for those customizations. To disable custom colors, um, every feature that comes into WordPress also needs an off button, and that is add theme purport to your uh, functions PHP and then disable underscore custom colors, underscore custom underscore colors. And as I said before, you can use it in the theme JSON as well. And then the custom color link is gone. Um, the same with the font sizes, um, you can um, switch off custom font sizes for your clients or for the client site, and then um, they cannot, they only have the pre-built font sizes that you also can put in the theme JSON. Um, and you find them in the theme JSON if you use um, a, a theme that you got from somebody else or that you take over as a contractor or so. Yeah, that's where you find those custom fonts. There are multiple ways now with uh, theme JSON um, to curate the editor experience. And you can all do this in, um, so I, I put this, this is from the documentation on WordPress.org, um, how you switch off the background color for settings for blocks, like custom blocks, or uh, like uh, group blocks or, or cover blocks. Um, duotone, yeah. Duotone is a nice way to fill them, put a filter on your pictures, but not everybody wants them. The same with gradients uh, or default gradients or the default palette. The same with the typography. You can switch off the drop cap from the, the paragraph one, or uh, there are no controls for transform decoration and all that. You can switch off all those controls, um, and then it makes it mm, less prone to changes by uh, your. Uh, clients or editors of clients, yeah. So, but there are other methods to do, and um, uh, Fabian had uh, quite a few. Also, um, talked about the locking of blocks um, and the content-only editing for patterns. So, um, that's certainly I would um, recommend that you watch that part of uh, Fabian's talk. There's also a link in the. Um, in the slide that gets you on the uh, uh, documentation pages. There's a one, just look for or search for curating the editor experience. And it that comes up very fast in, in the search engine. So, um, so you can provide controls and options, default controls and options. You can limit the interface options with um, uh, the theme JSON settings. You can also uh, disable inherited default layout. Um, and limit options globally or per block. So that's um, that, um, and, and every use case is different, but it's um, actually relatively uh, fast to to uh, accomplish that. So level two is block patterns, and patterns is a collection of core blocks. Can, could also be custom blocks um, that are available to the editor 
through the insert. Yeah, on the left-hand side, you have a big blue button plus. You click on this, you have a tab. One is the blocks, the other one are patterns, and the third one is media. Um, and the patterns uh, show up there. So patterns can come from the pattern directory. And I don't know if you saw that, but there is now a new drop-down box here that says curated. Um, that is, um, some of the blocks are kind of looked for, uh, curation means a designer looked through them and marked them kind of, these are higher quality kind of thing, or these are um, kind of uh, 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 interesting patterns in all, all of the categories. So you can see uh, posts, um, post means query loop, um, galleries, call to action, banners and headers, patterns, wireframe patterns um, that you can get from the pattern directory on wordpress.org slash patterns. Patterns, yeah. Um, and you just copy paste them into your um, post or, or pages. Then uh, patterns can come in with your theme. And then you can also have uh, custom made patterns that you can, that an editor or an a user of WordPress can now uh, create in the interface, in the site editor, uh, since 6.3. So the last, the current version has that. We can build patterns now, yes, feature. So um, yeah, just so if you haven't seen it yet, the, these are some kind of patterns from the pattern directory. Um, to create pattern, it's all in PHP, but only one yeah, set of it's it's a very low key pattern uh, PHP. It's um, yeah, you register uh, a block pattern, you give it a, a namespace and then a name, and then you put in a title, a description, a category, and then you can use the content that you created with a site editor, a post editor, copy paste it in here, and then uh, these are patterns we created for a, um, a foundation site, one with the picture on the left and the other one with the picture on the right, but the text was all formatted. Yeah. Um, you can do it with uh, no code. There are two, if you're not on 6.3 yet, you can use it with um, Jean-Papiste Audras. Core Committer has a plugin um, and the uh, editor's kit for Xendify also has a, no, it's not Xendify anymore, sorry, but um, by Munir Kamal also has a huge selection of patterns and page layouts. So, I also have some favorite themes with patterns. One is Toby by Anders Norin. The other one is Eno by Elmer Studio. And then, of course, the 2024, if you haven't seen it yet. Take a look at it. It's a really fabulous default theme to come with 6.4, um, which is maybe three weeks away to hit your uh, um, WordPress instance near you. Then um, there's a whole uh, documentation about patterns. And then uh, WP Tavern had an article kind of patterns will change everything, very opinionated. But I, um, I agree with Fabian when he said this morning that um, the that patterns came actually made the, the use for custom blocks, um, custom as a Simple custom blocks, um, use, uh, yeah, don't, uh, you don't use them anymore because you can do patterns. Um, there's a switch in, if, um, in terminology. So uh, first when I talked about patterns, people ask me, are you talking about reusable blocks? Yeah, you know what reusable blocks are? Okay, yeah, they, you put them once and then you put them in, the, uh, in multiple posts and every time it's the same content, but when you change it on one post, it changes all the other instances as well. So it's actually opposite of a pattern. A pattern, when you put it into the post or page, um, it uh, stops existing as a pattern. It's just a collection of blocks, and then you can change it, and you're not messing up somebody else's post or something like that. Yeah. Now, um, because from the idea, it's actually the same. It's just kind of the... Uh, so the name change was now reusable block are now patterns, synced patterns, uh, in opposed to other patterns, <laughs> unsynced patterns. Um, and that 10 minutes, okay, let's go faster. Um, well, the other part is that um, 
we are working on, or the, the developers are working on partially synced patterns so that um, there you can uh, define a certain um, places where you can say, okay, sync this, but not that. I'm, I'm really curious how that is going to turn out. So level three is add block styles. And block styles are the, some, the things that you see under the style section. And we also uh, know that doesn't scale that well. Yeah, there was actually uh, a, a dropdown where you can set something at default. That has gone, is gone now. You cannot say this is default unless you use code. Um, and then block variations are uh, blocks that show up in the inserter. Yeah. Uh, what you can do now with styles is you can say, okay, show it in the transform menu. So if you have a, a separator in a certain way and you want to transform it in another, you don't have to open the sidebar, you just uh, can use the transform uh, section there. But um, so um, this is a style with hand-drawn frames are around an image. And this is an example from uh, uh, Justin Tadlock. He had a post on the developer blog and that's how that's pretty much the code of it yeah you add a uh, an action and you have the function and then register block style with a name a label and you could do inline styles and that is uh and the inline style is if you're very good at css you can write this right now and you have a new style so it's a it's four or five lines of code and you have give your editors a new uh, way of having an image drawn or having a, a button outline or something like that. And there's another attribute that you could use here and that says, is default yes or no? And if it's yes, then you it, it kind of turns this style into the default style and it's always the same. Yeah, if you, you don't have to every time. So I have a theme where I have a, a separator style but it's not the default one. So every time I use the separator, I have to go to the sidebar and select the style. So I could go into the code, change the little thingy there, and add is default into it. So, And of course, yeah, you can also unregister uh, core block styles. If you say, well, I don't want rounded images in my website ever, yeah, you can um, uh, unregister those or unregister hand drawn or something like that yeah, with two, three lines of code um, in your functions PHP. Block variations, and that's where I'm kind of going a little faster now. Um, uh, so you can have block variations like in, in the columns when you select the columns block, you see the five, six different variations blank. Uh, three columns, 70, 30 kind of switch, two columns. Um, and those are variations that are offered to you. Um, or you have a, a, a block a, a block that's intro. It's called intro that looks like this. Um, you see it in the insert and you can use it like any other block, but it's just a variation. It's built on top of core blocks. Um, yeah. So um, there is, um, we have a few proliferation of terms that are not always clear what they are because people talk about block style variations. Uh, yeah, is it a block style or is it a variation? It's a different, uh, it's a different function, uh, but there are also style variations that you get with themes, yeah, where you can have uh, a separate theme JSON that change everything from your theme into different fonts, different colors and all that, and you see it in the uh, site editor. So it's really important to um, kind of go in there and read the documentation, definitely, and to get familiar with that. Um, on the developer blog, there is an introduction to block variations. It's a nice tutorial um, that you can, who knows about the developer blog? That's a third, I would say. So there is on there. Um, I'm, I'm going to go there now. Sorry. That's you earned it. <laughs> Oops. Oh, if I can. <laughs> if my ever lets me. Okay. So developer wordpress.org slash news. And that's a developer blog. And it's relatively new. It went online in November, where uh, when 
uh, out of beta in uh, March. So we have, and that's the latest post, what's new for developers, and then tutorials, how WordPress developers can keep their users safe, HTML, API, process your tags, not your pain. Fabian talked about the uh, HTML API, understanding block attributes. That was a really light opener, uh, eye opener for me. Um, and then uh, you can go to see all posts and look through it. And there's a tutorial after tutorial, yeah, adding and using custom settings for your theme JSON. Um, introduction to block variations, anatomy of a, yeah, that's done design, mere, uh, the letter form. And then there is a, uh, a series beyond block styles from test by uh, um, Justin Tadlocks. And he goes from the problem that you have that the styles do not scale well in the sidebar to putting all the styles on a button and then make that uh, available. Yeah, th kind of, uh, that's the, that's what you get is kind of uh, a, a separator bar that you can select from, from a button on your toolbar and then it gives you a different sidebar. So these are all great examples. Let's go back to the slide because I might have more for you. Um, so these are all links about uh, block style, block variation, block filters. And then level four, there are three block plugins where you can, oh, and ACF, everybody probably knows um, uh, advanced custom fields. There's also one from Genesis custom blocks um, that was previously block bar where you can, and they're all the same, they have, you have fields to put in uh, or fields where you can put in content or, um, and then you can create the template in PHP for rendering those fields in the block editor. And um, everything else is kind of abstracted uh, behind the scenes. Um, that's how Advanced Custom Fields Pro does it, custom blocks, um, former block lab. And there's another plugin called Lazy Blocks, who uses actually various scripting um, tools to, for you as a developer um, to, um, create the template for the uh, front end of that. Um, there was a very old article, but it's still, because it was so basic, still relevant to kind of compare the three um, on the WP Tavern um, that you can check out. And then level five is definitely create custom blocks. That's uh, where a, a lot of people kind of migrate yeah, over from ACF. Um, to, okay, interface-wise, it's probably easier or better to use custom blocks. There's a create block tutorial, and then learnwordpress.org. So the website has several courses. One is an in, in introduction to um, custom block development, how to convert a shortcut to blocks. It's more like the strategic approach on that. It's not, it's not an automation conversion. <laughs> yeah. Um, how to use the WordPress data layer, uh, registering block patterns, of course, and then, um, more, um, block development. And then I have a selection of articles that cover all that on the developer blog, um, .wordpress.news. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, but I think that um, we do a better job than before in the documentation to create some tutorials that are really uh, raw, real life examples that you can use in your day to day um, um, development um, learning or uh, getting to custom blocks. And that's pretty much it. Stay in touch. My WordPress Slack and Twitter. Um, DMs are open. It's all under at BPH. Um, you can also catch me via email um, or via the Twitter account of the Gutenberg Times. I also share the link to the podcast and to the subscription. And this is the podcast 92 that just came out with uh, Joni Halabi. And then we have the slides. Out. So this was it. We are in time. Wow. That was fast. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do you have questions? This is uh, this was amazing. I have tons of questions, but I'm not <laughs> going to start here. So we have the first question. Gleich mal eine dumme Frage auf Deutsch. Du hast ja zuerst 
gezeigt, dass man diese Patterns sich rausziehen kann. Und wenn ich das richtig verstanden habe, gibt es bei jedem Blog jetzt auch ein Feld, in dem ich für den Blog das CSS ändern kann? Ja. Okay, warum muss ich dann überhaupt noch irgendwelche Blöcke entwickeln? Das ist schon alles, was ich brauche. Das ist dein Use Case und to äh, total, äh, ja, ich stimme dir da total zu. Okay, also ja, ich habe totally agree ich with hab, you. Ich ja. habe das richtig verstanden. Ja, ja. Also du, ich meine, wenn du mit CSS unheimlich gut zurechtkommst, dann kannst du für jeden Block ein CSS auf deiner Seite machen. Aber nicht jeder geht durch das. Äh, die haben keine Ahnung von CSS. Das heißt, sie brauchen eben auch mal äh, oder sollen nicht so viel Möglichkeiten haben mit ihrem Editieren und so. Und dann brauchen natürlich andere Möglichkeiten. Und das Gute am Gutenberg ist halt, dass für jedes Level of Expertise ist also irgendwo was da. Ja. Nächste Frage, da war glaube ich hier noch einer, oder? Oder du? Hi. Der, der ah. das Mikrofon hat, gewinnt. Äh, Frage zu Blogstyles, also gerade auch, um, um den Titel nochmal aufzugreifen, for Clients. Äh, für uns ist der Use Case auch sehr oft dass äh, wir eben die, äh, den Blog-Editor so weit runter reduzieren, dass der Kunde ihn Brain Dead benutzen kann, sage ich mal, um auch das CI einzuhalten. Ähm, was wir da zum Beispiel machen, ist beim der Core-Button-Block wird bei uns sehr, sehr, sehr hart beschnitten und dann mit Styles, äh, mit Block-Styles äh, ähm, bestückt, mhm. die dann eben sich sehr genau um Farbpaletten und äh, ja. Effekte und so ein Kram kümmern. Ja. Ähm, Weißt du, ob da mit 6.4 oder später noch was kommt oder hast du einen anderen Approach, den du empfehlen würdest oder ist das deiner Meinung nach schon der Weg? Welchen Teil? <lacht> Für welchen Teil? Weil, ja, vielleicht. Depends. Jetzt statt, ähm Statt, äh, und, und die Option entfernt, Blockstyles definiert oder Variations meinetwegen, ja. ähm, um das entsprechend client sicher zu machen mhm. oder ob es da nicht vielleicht doch besser wäre, die Core-Sachen Core-Sachen sein zu lassen und ein bisschen mehr auf Custom-Blocks zu setzen vielleicht. Ähm, ich glaube, dass äh, der, äh, also Core-Blocks hat natürlich den Vorteil, dass alle New Features dann mit dem Core-Block kommen, hat den Nachteil, dass alle New Features dann wieder abgeschaltet werden müssen, wenn man sie nicht will. Das total sehe ich. Aber was ich auch sehe, ist, dass man, was auch Fabian angesprochen hat, dass man die Steile, die Styles, die man hat, nicht kombinieren kann. Du kannst also jetzt nicht einen blauen Button nehmen mit einem rosa Umrandung, wenn du da zwei das kommt halt nicht, ja. Also musst du dann nochmal einen dritten Stil machen und das geht dann alles außer, irgendwie außer Hand, ja. Bin mir nicht sicher. Ich hatte den Eindruck, dass man, dass äh, darüber nachgedacht wird, wie man äh, Style Combinations machen kann. Aber ich habe da noch keine, kein Prototyp gesehen oder sowas. Ja, also das würde dann vielen Leuten auch helfen. Ja. Mhm. Mhm. Ja. ja, aber das ist dann auch nicht mehr in dem style Sync, sondern das glaube ich in einer separat Sidebar, ne? ja. Und das ist eben das, ja, und das ist eben das, wo, wo, wo die User-Interface so ein bisschen noch holprig ist, ja. Total sehe ich, ja, total, ja. Um, I asked my question in English. Um, you yeah. showed many snippets with PHP code to add, like add or delete style Uh, styles, variations, all of that. Do you still need PHP for that or is this already possible in a theme JSON or will it be possible in the future with the theme JSON? Vieles ist schon machbar in theme JSON. Um, auf jeden Fall. Also das Abschalten von den um, uh, Custom Settings, das ist um, beides gleich, aber nicht jeder uh, benutzt theme JSON in, sehr classic, in, in, the, in the classic themes. Um, so they also need a, a way to do it in PHP. That's why I've showed it both. Um, and when you look at some of the more ex, um, more complicated or complex themes, you see there's a lot of function uh, code uh, code in the functions PHP that um, takes care of block variations or block styles or even custom blocks. Uh, now, I, I think it was in six point two 
where the barrier to have blocks and themes has been removed. So because few, uh, many, many agencies do bespoke themes, yeah, and there is no reason to have the block separate from the theme. Um, and um, yeah, there's a lot of PHP code in them. I think PHP is still with us for a long time. Yeah, I recognize that 2023 didn't have a functions PHP and 2024 has a functions PHP. Not for a lot of things, but mm -hmm. it feels like some of the new things are not in the theme JSON yet. Yeah, or might not future. ever be. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, because I, as, as the developers approach it, yeah, they put it in theme JSON first and then create the interface and then. And that's also the part where they do it in PHP. But if it's not in, in theme JSON, then they also need go, no interface. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. And yes, I'm not sure if I'm answering your questions, right? I have two small questions. Uh, one is, uh, do you have a theme JSON generator, uh, which can help uh, people like me mm -hmm. to, to write the theme JSON? And uh, the second uh, uh, question is, um, What about pseudo styles like before and after? If you just have uh, one one line of inline style, is there a, a way to to use before Understand. and after? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's inlines. You, uh, inline style is not the only way to create block styles. Yeah, you can also um, have in the registration a file that goes uh, a list of file that has all the styles that you need. Uh, separately, so you need to go through the documentation and then can uh, have any style that you, any CSS that you need for your style, put in that separate file that gets loaded when the block is loaded on front end and on in the editor. Does it make sense? Mm, not sure, <laughs> so, but maybe I go afterwards. It's okay. So well, if it's not clear for you, it's not clear for anybody. <laughs> All right, we have one more question. Yeah. Just not killed. Uh, thank you very much for your speech. Um, You're I want to ask in German. I hope it's okay. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, eine persönliche Frage. Also mittlerweile ist das Problem wahrscheinlich der ganze Community bekannt, wenn man eigene Blöcke entwickelt und die safe funktion halt in React halt baut und die nachträglich, wenn die Blöcke platziert sind, umändert, entsteht halt dieser bekannte Fehler, was leider anders nicht handhabbar ist sozusagen, mm -hmm. dass der Block unerwartet bearbeitet wurde. Daher meine Frage an dich persönlich, wie gehst du damit um, wenn man halt einmal ein Kundenprojekt mit der Safe-Funktion gemacht hat und nachträglich irgendwelche Änderungen machen möchte und am Ende der Kunde sich dann beschwert zum Beispiel, dass die ganzen Blöcke im Backend kaputt gegangen sind. Mm -hmm. Also ich habe einmal eine schlechte Erfahrung gesammelt, deswegen ist meine, also persönlich nehme ich immer die Dynamic Blocks, mhm. aber ich würde gerne mal deine Meinung dazu ähm, erfahren, äh, wie du damit umgehst. Ähm, ja, ich bin da ähm, mit, also man hat eigentlich immer propagiert, dass Static Blocks kommen und dass diese Veränderung ist, da gibt es dann ein, ein separates ähm, Tool, das heißt also deprecation of blocks and you need to kind of what's expected on the safe block and what's new kind of thing and that needs to cover. I've never really understood that, so um, the dynamic block it is, <laughs> yeah, um, because that's really hard to, um, a, a lot of people really understand it, but I don't uh, that much, so I don't really assume, but there is a post on this developer blog about deprecation. And um, that can definitely help you with that particular case um, to, when I would find it here, is block deprecation a tutorial. Yeah, and Michael did a fabulous job to take it from uh, progressive enhancement, so to speak, yeah, from a simple example yeah, to, um, to a more complex one yeah, that you have to put in in the build uh, a deprecation.js and then you have all the variations from your block um, be registered and so the editor can read that to her. It's, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 
total Ghetto, ja, ja. Ja, es, das sind also die, die Lernerfolge. Das heißt, einmal gewinnt man und einmal lernt man. Einmal, ja. um, do, we have, do we have more questions or we're sleeping here tonight? <laughs> I sure. can't. I have to get the shuttles. All right. Yeah. Well, um, thank, you. Here. Yeah. thank you, Birgit, for the session we had. It mm. was a true pleasure having you today. Well, thank you. It was a great pleasure. And see, 